There are plenty of icons in London, the cabs famed the world over, the red double-deckers. Don't forget the landmark buildings, the high Victorian splendour of Tower Bridge, the striking modernism of the Shard or City Hall on the South Bank. And now one of the capital's greatest landmarks has teamed up with one of our country's most iconic symbols. The Tower of London and the Poppy. One resonating with a thousand years of history, the other symbolising the suffering of millions who gave their lives on all sides during the Great War. There are thousands of poppies here, the brainchild of artist Paul Cummins. It's called Blood-Swept Lands and Seas of Red. Eventually, there will be 888,246, one for each British Empire or Commonwealth serviceman killed between 1914 and 1918. Thousands of people every day visit the tower to see the growing Red Sea cover more and more of the moat. In this film, we'll see how this project has developed and come to fruition, how thousands of people have given their time to help it grow, and understand how the tower poppies provide a stark focal point for remembrance 100 years on from the outbreak of the Great War. August the 5th, 2014. Blood Sweat Lands and Seas of Red is officially launched and receives the Royal Seal of Approval, courtesy of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry. There are already 100,000 ceramic poppies here. Planting began on the 17th of July. But the installation is only part of how the fallen of the Great War are being remembered. At 9 o'clock tomorrow night and throughout August and 8 o'clock in September, at sunset, there'll be a sunset ceremony where the names of some of the fallen will be read out and a bugler from the grassy knoll behind me will sound the last post. So this is an installation for everyone. Artist Paul Cummins came up with the idea for this project after being inspired by the will of a Derbyshire serviceman who was killed in Flanders. Each poppy is handmade by craftsmen in factories in Stoke and Derby. Ultimately, there will be enough to fill the 16-acre Tower of London moat. There's about 35 of us that literally sit there and make them. They make about 800 to 1,000 a day each. And when they do break one, they get a little bit stroppy because it's, they see it as somebody's life they've broken. They have to remake it, which is quite poignant for quite a lot of the charities because they help put people's lives back together. The poppy as a symbol has been associated with remembrance of our war debt for almost 100 years. The first plants to grow in the shattered landscape of the trenches were red poppies. Their seeds had lain dormant through the fighting, the churning of the mud, the horror, the death. After the guns fell silent, they miraculously bloomed into life. In 1918, the poppy was first suggested as a symbol for remembrance and was adopted by the American Legion in 1920. In 1921, the British Legion adopted it and the first poppy appeal was born. An apt symbol at the time and one which has risen in our nation's consciousness to become the symbol of remembrance, not only for those lost during the Great War, but in every conflict since. The Tower Poppies are the latest iteration of this. Volunteers are crucial to assembling this field of red. Each day, up to 200 give their time to assemble and plant the poppies. It's a major logistical exercise. That would start at five, and then we'd prepare the ground for the day. So we all have a briefing the day before on where we're going to do and what we're going to do. And then we just move the kit and equipment to them particular areas, lay it out, set it up for our volunteers to arrive. Volunteers will start arriving at about nine o'clock. Now, depending on the numbers, an average day is approximately 200 people. So in segments of 40 to 50, we take them into a briefing room and we show them two um, DVDs. So that's like the introduction. Then followed by a short DVD on how to actually plant the poppy. There are six different component parts to it and in conjunction with health and safety and what kit and equipment you need to wear. So they're briefed on that. They're then introduced to their team leaders who will then take them outside, give them an introduction on the Tower of London itself, <laughs> the do's and don'ts in the tower, and then they come out to the area like we are today where they receive a further practical demonstration by one of the team leaders <laughs> on what they've got to do. They're shown their areas of work, given their kit and equipment, split into smaller teams 
so that some will produce in rods, then some will be doing planting, and some other people will be go-getters, go and get in water, go and get some more rods or whatever they need for their, and they rotate that between themselves. So that shift would then work for four hours. It's a really good atmosphere here today. All these people, most of whom we've never met before, coming together, working, production there of the stems, the washers being attached, others then planting them, all rotating through. A great British achievement, this whole concept of volunteering, isn't it? People willing and happy and very keen to give up their free time. And it's going exceptionally well. Some days they can plant 5,000 poppies in a single sitting, depending how many volunteers they have got. And bearing in mind it's a pottery object, very fragile, really, in the scheme of things, there aren't that many breakages. And this is where those that do get broken end up. As you can see here, this M1, only three today broken by us on site, it says. Fewer misshapen. Um, the process of firing isn't an exact science, and some do crack apart. And uh, we've also got a few here with a hole in the middle, it's just a little bit too small. But all of these get accounted for and then get dispatched back to the factory. Fresh ones come out again before the planting process can continue. And next, the next day's volunteers can come in. Basically, we are building the stems with these washers, which sound quite tough, um, placing a poppy on them, tightening them up, and then planting them uh, here, as we will, as close together as possible, in no particular order, but with the odd taller poppy. And um, yeah, it's quite, <laughs> yeah, a few thousand to go. What was it like when you planted the first one? What were you thinking? Oh, I, I was a actually thinking that, um, you know, this poppy is in memory of somebody who's been in a, a blood red field somewhere. And it's very moving. Yeah, it's really fun. There's, uh, it's good, the sun's out, so it's sort of a nice day out. and. Uh, there's sort of activity, lots of talking, so it's just a really fun sort of sociable thing. And obviously there's like the, uh, sort of the serious aspect of it as well, which is sort of quite nice to think about as well. But. It's very different, isn't it, being down here as opposed to being up and watching it. How, how did you feel and what sense did it give you when you first got up close to the installation? Um, I thought it was really impressive, actually, very impressive. And uh, so much is being done to commemorate such an important thing. I think it's really spe quite a special thing. Among the red t-shirts of the volunteers, the smart white shirts of the Royal Navy. They're from HMS Westminster and were keen to come down and lend a hand. Uh, very important because obviously it's people that have died in the Royal Navy, we're remembering them, so we should come down to pay our respects and help plant these poppies. You're busily planting the poppies. Um, what's the process like? How, how difficult is it? Um, it's a bit more than I thought it was going to be. So I just got to assemble all this and then put it in the ground. I thought you'd just come along and just put them in. But no, it's a lot different than what I thought it would be. Uh, well, I've been planting them quite quick, done about like a couple of boxes already. So it's not hard to put them in the ground. So there's, like, there's loads of people around, so everyone's just getting stuck in. For some of Westminster's crew, like Lieutenant Tim Montague, being part of this project helps forge a link with his own family members who fought and died in the Great War. We left him at Harmsworth, uh, Royal Navy, and he was in Hawk Battalion, uh, age 21. Uh, Hawk Battalion, a Royal Naval Division, uh, so Royal Navy sailors fighting on the front line in the Western Front. He was age 21, he had 150 person, uh, personnel under his command and he wrote a letter uh, the day before he went uh, over the top, as it were, um, and he sadly died in Beaufort Hamill. Uh, uh, and he and he, the letter was along the lines of it, it is, you know, don't think sadly of me uh, dying. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he was absolutely um, positive uh, that he was doing, uh, dying for the greater good. Uh, and it was quite a profound letter to read. I'm not as sailors and volunteers continue their work, thousands of tourists, city workers and locals pause to watch. A significant proportion of them have made the journey specially to see this field of red take shape. And we've come to see it today because I think it's something you do need to see. I think that, that the loss of life was horrific, but I think also actually what it meant to be free in Europe you know, something that's difficult to think about now, that fighting European neighbours, but, but, but the two world wars won that freedom for us. 
Um, and so people made a huge sacrifice. And when you look at this, when I looked at this, I thought, this looks like a river of blood. And I think that's what, what it must have been like. It must have been hell for the people who fought. I think that it's an amazing sight, actually. Um, the reason we've come is we've heard about it, and it's an amazing spectacle. And we've actually bought one to have plant in our garden for when they're finished. But uh, no, it's amazing, absolutely fantastic. Fantastic piece of art commemorating a, a very, very sad um, event, in, a, a event in, yeah, in history. And um, I like so many others had granddads, fathers, whatever, in, in both wars. And it, it just affects me deeply, it really does. Every volunteer you speak to tells you of the great sense of privilege of being involved in this project and the eerie feeling of planting your first poppy. Actually a bit tough, isn't it? Here we go. And there. And that's your soldier. And my soldier is planted. That's quite a weird feeling, isn't it, doing that? Just It's an individual soul there. So. It's an individual soul, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's quite, being remembered. that's quite a special feeling. Yeah. It really was a special feeling, and an honour to be able to add my own tribute. My cameraman, Chris, was keen to plant his poppy too. That was weird. That's weird, like, as you were saying, it's like kind of a bit more surreal that you're planting someone that iconic who's weird. But it's lovely, yes. Thank you very much. Recently, the image of poppies cascading from the tower became the most viewed picture on Google. That's how much this work of remembrance has caught the imagination of the world.